Perfect. Hello again, it's real blue. Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about some free agents and uh, some teams that have formed already for the Rogue Company Summer Series. Some of them look pretty enticing uh, to win a championship so far. And uh, I, let's just get into it because I'm pretty excited about this. All right, first thing, uh, some of these tweets are pretty old, so we're going to go pretty far back into it to kind of tell the story and what whatnot so uh you guys know what's up all right so here we got a, a tweet from fanatics from eu uh this was before the actual announcement of what is now only one team coming from eu so probably not going to be seeing fanatics playing in the tournaments now that uh that information is out there but he was a free agent and uh, when i saw this originally i was really excited about it because he came from paladins i've watched him play uh, Rogue Company as well as Paladin. So I've watched him play two games competitively, and I was I was pretty excited to watch him in this, but probably not going to see him anymore. Uh, then we have this one. This this is a good one. Uh, so we've got Frag, Delana, Drew, and uh, P Story, and that would be their four v four. It says Gronky has stepped down from competing, and the duo will be missed. Uh, I think Gronky's just trying to chill right now. I think Gronky's like, you know what? I've won one of these lands. I came in second in the other land. Uh, maybe Gronky just doesn't enjoy playing the game right now. Uh, whatever it may be, Gronky's stepping down. Maybe he's going back to focusing on Fortnite YouTube videos. Who knows? Um, he'll be missed. I liked watching Gronky play. Uh, just seeing his brain tick and, and, and think during a game was awesome. Uh, but this is a strong squad. I really love this squad, actually. Frag, Delana, that's a duo that we've seen a couple times. Put Drew in there, and now you got three people that can snipe the sh absolute piss out of you. Um, and then you have Peace Story, who is, a, like I've said, a top three, top five player. Um, maybe not top three after this most recent land, but definitely... Over the course of all of competitive, I would definitely throw him up there in the top five. Could be an argument for top three. But uh, this was before the frag out situation. If you're unaware about that, um, what at first was a ban, I think, has become a suspension. Don't know how long the suspension would be um, or don't know if they just kept it a, a ban. But high res did release an official statement from like radar saying that he's just suspended for the time being. Um, I was asked my opinion by someone within the road company competitive, like important people, uh, their board, I guess you could say, how long would you suspend him for? Um, and my personal opinion that I told them was, you know, the qualifiers actually mean something a little bit more so now than they have in the past for the, for the spring land, especially. So, uh, I would suspend them for the first two weeks because, you know, if the team plays with them only, then they're going to miss those first two weeks of points. Their seating is not going to be the best. Um, or they could play without them and just sub them in like everyone does anyways. Uh, so that was my opinion to them. I don't know what they're going to do still. So I don't know how long that suspension is going to be. After that happened, that whole that whole mess on Twitter, we got a tweet from Delana saying uh, he'll be retiring. Since his, I always think the word retiring in uh, esports is funny. Uh, he'll be retiring since his teammates quit and one got banned. Uh, I am being serious about this. My favorite response to this is Gronky's where he just puts in quotes, I am being serious about this. Um, I, I thought that was hilarious. I don't know if this is true, especially if it's just a, a suspension for like one or two, maybe three, whatever, however long, uh, for frag. So if he comes back, that would be their team. All right. So let's take a look at some teams and some, uh, I, I think I've got like three teams that were announced that were interesting to me. And then we've got a couple free agents. Uh, and then some people that we haven't heard free agency tweets from or we haven't seen them on a, a roster and, and they should be um, and they're the most intriguing um, or not the most intriguing, but they it, it, we'll we'll get to it. Anyways, we got slop dropping a tweet here uh, with 
A lot of these came before the actual format announcement too. So we got Prosper, MS, Slop, and Ink. This is a dangerous lineup. I like that Ink's coming back to compete, and I like the fact that um, you know, Slop and Emis, they won the last land with Drew. Now it's 4v4. Drew moved on, possibly, and now they're picking up Ink. I think that's a good pickup. Not the same play style and not the same rogue pool as Drew, but still uh, can be as good and as deadly. Uh, and then you have Prosper and Emis. Again, they won the last land. And then you got Slop. Slop went out there and said, you know what? I want to compete. I want to go to land. I'm going to go get my vaccination. So I think Slop was against the vaccines at first. Um, and now has went and got both shots in order to travel. I know he has a passport. We've seen him in North America for land events for Paladins before. So I know he has a passport. Um, but that's, uh, I don't want to say that's awesome. It is, but I don't think that's the quite the right words. I want to say it's it's very noble of him saying, you know what? I don't want to let my team down again or my friends, my teammates, whatever. I'm going to go get this vaccine so I can travel. He did that. So this is awesome. We get to see this team. This is a cool team. I, I can't wait to see them play. And I can't wait to see Slop if they make land at land again because uh, Slop on land is pretty awesome. Uh, so here's another new team for the summer series. This one is... <laughs> I don't know why they wrote Alan Stewart. Uh, that's their team name, but Losi is obsessed with Alan Stewart uh, recently. Uh, we've got Turner, Joker, ACOG, and Losi. This is an interesting team, uh, mostly because Joker has been on teams with Nash a lot recently. So he's finally not playing with Nash. He's moved away from that. I like the Nash Joker P story lineup. Just adding a strong fourth would have been awesome for them. But uh, Joker's here with ACOG, Lucy, and Turner. I like this lineup. I think Turner did okay at the land. I think that um, when you see people like Bluff and Turner and they're doing things with snipers, I think it's a lot of flash. Right? It's real flashy plays, and that kind of overshadows them not playing that great. They got like last place, man. You have to remember that, right? Like, they did not win that many maps. I think they won, like, maybe one or two maps the entire event. So, got to step it up. Uh, and I think the flashy plays kind of hides that. Joker has been to land. He's gotten second place once and then, like, third or fourth, whatever, at this last land. Uh, so, he knows what it takes to compete now, uh, especially. Turner does as well. Losi has been to land, went to the last land as a coach, didn't play. Uh, but he's still been in that environment with them playing on land. Um, just the only thing he's missing is playing on land. So he does have some land experience now. So he's got that under his belt. So you got three veteran players. Uh, ACOG, I would say, is a veteran player as well. But ACOG hasn't played on land. ACOG has not been on a top team, I would say. Um, so this is probably the best team that ACOG has been on. Uh, that I can remember straight off the top of my head. So this is a good one. I can't wait to see what ACOG can do with these other three players and what kind of lineups they come out with, what kind of rogue sets. Because remember, we have a rogue draft now. So um, maybe this is a strategic play towards the draft. And they know that. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, and then the last one. This one is nice looking. And also interesting. We've got Canny, the bull, of course, uh, veteran third place giant uh he didn't get third place at this last land but he didn't get first either so it's still that championship eludes him uh so that's what he wants who's that he's gonna be with him again so that's the duo there's some more chemistry coming in for him and then they're bringing in hizzy and tana i like the hizzy pickup i think hizzy got like a serotonin injection of rogue company competitiveness when he went to the land you know, you saw it in him too. He, his, he's always been a guy who gets real emotional while playing, always gets super pumped, you know, has that energy, but you could tell it was kind of different when he went to the land because when things weren't going his way online, he would still be hyped. He'd be trying to hype himself, be trying to hype his teammates. Let's go. Let's fucking go. You know, and stuff like that. Or like, don't fuck it. Don't play with me. Don't play. With, you know what I'm saying? But at the land, it was kind of like, he got if he got dogged on or they lost or something went awry, he kind of settled down, you know. So I think that kind of hit him with the the right injection of competitiveness, saying, "I want to do this again. 
I, I don't want to lose like that again in, in person. I don't want to lose like that again. So th- I think he's got a little bit of grind in him now, uh, a little bit more than before. And I think he, he, he wants to win to win now. It's not about anything else. He wants to win to win. And that's good. Uh, Tana, young star that came out of that console only squad Cinderella story. Uh, I think Tana was really good. He impressed me, especially with the devotion. Uh, the uh, the shots that he was hitting on the PC rigs, man. He was he was probably like, this feels good, man. This feels good. I think it's only like 30 FPS more than a PS5 or whatever he's playing on 120. Uh, but still, that's a lot, and it was a big improvement. And it was good to see Tana already has that land experience, young in the scene. Uh, can't wait to see what they develop into. So this is a good squad. The main thing that stuck out to me about this is that there is no class. Canny and who's don't have class with them. So that was what stuck out to me. Uh, so it looks like who's that's going to have to play chalk. Uh, so let's talk about some tweets from some players that I think should be on teams, or maybe they're underrated, or maybe they just intrigued me that they said, Hey, I want to compete. Right. Uh, number one, Mikey. O nation. Uh, Mikey had a tough time at the first LAN, but also didn't have the best team at the first LAN. I think Mikey's been grinding. That's that ranked demon. Um, Mikey's a good guy, too, and I think that Mikey knows what it takes to win. Uh, just has to like get that competitive spark to blow up more so than, you know, maybe it's lit a little bit. It's like a little lantern right now, but a little, a little sterno. It's not going to go out, but it's not like going to burn your house down. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, that one intrigued me that he's still a free agent. Nash, free agent for the summer series. I haven't seen a tweet from Nash declaring them on a roster. Maybe I just need to check again. Uh, but for right now, I don't see them on a roster. And I think that is terrible because he's been there since the beginning. Um, and he's a great player. Yeah, see, look, we're going all the way June 7th. He's retweeting other people right there. Yeah, that's... Free agent. Um, I can't wait to see what he does. Uh, he can go two routes. He can go, he can build a team to win, or he can build a team with some young guys to kind of see if he can sneak himself into that winning category and, and develop some players the way he'd like them. Uh, like Tooney. You see Tooney, who was on that Cinderella story, um, you know, commenting on there. So that's something that could happen. Uh, with some young talent like that. But Nash needs to be on a team. Nash needs to be playing. Nash and Rogue Company go together like wine and cheese. Uh, he's he's not going to do anything but wine. But, you know, and, and he, he's going to stink sometimes like cheese. But, hey, they go together. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding, Nash. Uh, okay, so now are some some players that intrigue me that they're not here. I mean, you could probably see at the top, the tabs, uh, geo, this, this one intrigues me because I always see tweets from geo and no disrespect to him, but he's always talking to hot mess, man. And I got into a conversation with him about the draft in, in rank the other day. And he told me like, you know, I just wanted to play juke, man. And she got picked. And I'm like, if you just want to try juke, Ranked is not the place to do that. So I don't know if he actually wants to compete. He says, he, honestly, he might want to give this an honest try. I don't know. He was a decent player back in the day when he com- when he tried to compete, right? Like in the 8Ks and stuff. I think he got like seventh in the first one. And he feels as if he was getting snaked by a bunch of people all the time in the community, which could be true. I don't know the, the, true, the real stories and the backgrounds and all that. But when I think of Geo, I just think of like snipers, and that's about it. And other than other than Fixer right now, I don't really see Runway or Phantom a lot competitively. Maybe that'll change because there's no mirror matchups anymore. Um, but I don't know, man. If you're gonna take it serious, take it serious and you know, get in there and really dive in. But this intrigued me because if he shows up and he does good people got to stop hating on him. But if he shows up and he gets shit on, it's time to start rethinking those tweets before you hit send all the time, man. Uh, This one, potential free agent for the summer series, Preach. I think he played pretty decently at the LAN event as well. Uh, So it'll be interesting to see who picks him up or if he's able to form a team. I like watching Preach play. 
Uh, it's unfortunate he's not playing with Losi in them. Um, but again, they they've got their squad. Preach. He's a he's a good player, so I'd like to see him playing as well. Next one is Yoksi. Nothing from him so far. No free agent tweet. No nothing. Interested to see if he's playing. I know he's always in eights, uh, and he's developed as a player as well. Not just inside the game, skill wise, mechanically, but also he's developed uh, big brain wise. I guess you could say about the game, game sense wise, uh, and also just overall. Before you even get into the game, I think he's developed as a player. So it's all the eights he's playing. Uh, then we have Bluffus, who also hasn't tweeted about being a free agent or anything. Um, but he made some plays. And again, going back to what I said about Bluffus and Turner, they make a lot of flashy plays as the snipers. Bluff did that, but he also made some flashy plays outside of sniper rogues at this land, just like he did at the first land a couple times. You know, he had his moments. They weren't in bunches, and they weren't huge detrimental plays to the games or the series overall but he shed some light on himself again so uh bluff is, needs to be on a team i think uh then we've got the haitian sensation galaxy hasn't made any tweets saying he's a free agent but again he can make some plays and he's also in the eights with yokes he's in p story all the time i think that he has developed uh some better mechanical and game skills and game sense as well so like to see him competing and then we have Class, who hasn't said he's a free agent or anything. We know he's not going to be on Candy's team from what we know right now. So um, we'll be interested to see if we see him playing. I want to see him playing. Class is a good dude. Then we have Jess. We've got the wingman all-female event happening at LAN. Um, I think Jess should give it a shot at 4v4 and go for the 18,000. I think Jess has a, a shot at that. I think if Jess goes for the two grand wingman female only thing, yeah, she'll get showcased. She's a female. And she deserves to be showcased. But at the same time, I feel like she would be settling when it comes to herself. I think that she can compete. She's just lazy. Uh, and she classifies herself as a pub star because she just doesn't put in the effort to compete in a comp setting. That's my opinion on her. Then we have Key. I think Key's a decent player. I think he's good. I think he deserves to be on a team. He mostly just has this freaking bot tweeting. Who visits my Twitter profile? Like, guys, who freaking cares, man? Uh, He was announced as the graphics person for the summer series. Um, so I don't know if he's going to be playing, but I think he deserves to be on a team. Also, this one was kind of weird to me. Cause like, I was like, Oh man, I'd love to see Pulsa compete, but Emmis Lopper and prosper. They, they picked up ink and, uh, they're probably going to be the only EU team that makes it. So for Pulsa, it's probably not worth it. Uh, unless they want to fly him out as a coach. Then he'll still get to come to land. Also, don't know if his hand's fully healed. Hope it is. Well, I hope Pulse is having a good day, man. Uh, then we have Cool. Cool's a really good player. I think Cool just really hates the game. Um, but I was in a call with him the other day, and he tried to play the game. He was like, I'm going to play a couple rogue games. I'm going to play ranked or something. Um, strikeout ranked. And uh, I don't know what's wrong with Cool's game, man, but he always has trouble with video games. He tried to queue. It didn't work. He got off. He went to bed. Uh, but I'd like, I'd like to see Kumek compete. I think he'd have a shot. Uh, maybe he can form a team with Nash, Class, and Bluffus Yosier Haitian. And they could kind of like just come in blazing. Hey, put put him on a team with Jess. Who knows, right? Uh, then we have P-Story. So I put this one in there because I don't know if if the frag team is going to you know be playing or sticking together. If they're not... P story, man. If Delano really retired, if Frag's really not gonna play because he's suspended or banned, and I think P story 
needs to go on a team, needs to be out there. Maybe he can relink with uh, Nash if he's not going to be playing with the original team that he was announced with. But if not, I'd like to see that team because uh, I'm a big P-Story fan. I hope he's having a good day too. And then we have Pixie. Pixie, of course, hasn't made a free agent tweet. He's been grinding uh, some stream games, you know, ranked, stuff like that. So he's been grinding. I don't know if he's going to be playing. I'd like to see him play. I think he was a good player. Uh, so it'd be interesting. But yeah, that's it for this one. That's all I got. Uh, that's all I got. A couple people I thought are intriguing players are still not on teams or haven't announced that they're on teams. A couple people with some free agent tweets out there. And then a couple teams that look intriguing to me uh, once they start playing we'll really dive in and see how they're going but that's it for me we'll see you on the next one. Oh, hello there it's blue i'm a terrible dancer so ignore that version of me on the screen and listen to my voice when i say thank you for watching my video i hope you enjoyed it make sure you like share subscribe and of course click on another video of mine i heard you'll like those over there they're pretty good